Guys, I knew it would be an interesting day when I woke up to this text message. Do you have a low libido? How did they know? Speaking of disappointment, life is all about kind of juggling disappointments, right? At some point, you're going to disappoint other people. People are going to disappoint you. And in fact, it's quite possible that fragrance houses can actually disappoint you in your expectations of new releases. And that's what today's video is all about. I'm telling you guys, this is straight up off the cuff. I don't even have pants on. I haven't did my her. I feel like I owe it to you guys and to myself to give you my spontaneous thoughts on these fragrances as to why they've disappointed me. Kind of a year in review, but not so retrospective, not so comprehensive, just on the 10 worst new releases, at least in my opinion, in terms of disappointment. I'll get into the definition of that just a bit. We've got that and more coming your way, so stay tuned. Yeah, nice. Welcome back everyone, thanks for stopping by. Today's video is gonna be kind of a fun, kind of poking fun a bit at some new releases. I think you gotta do that every now and then. You don't ever wanna to be too serious about your livelihood or your hobby. That saying all work and no play and all of that. Today's video is all about 10 of the most disappointing new releases of 2022. Again, not as comprehensive as a year in review, but kind of looking back on what I feel are 10 fragrance releases that were most disappointing to me. So we've got a lot to go over. We're gonna jump into this. If 2022 had a theme at all, it kind of feels like the year of uninspired releases. This next release by Davidoff is cool water reborn or really cool water casket cool water coffin i think they could rename this cool water finished because it feels like they're done with any creative ideas it was supposed to be a refresher of the cool water dna and ended up just being this very slight derivation of what's already out there that's not to say it's not a good fragrance i've worn this i've enjoyed it but it's nothing that much different if you want to wear the penultimate cool water cool water parfum is the best that's out there currently so you know i do like the what grapefruit and sage and all the variations of cool water that they come up with those are relatively creative cool water reborn is not that creative while i've never been a believer in reincarnation i've never been closer to agreeing that it exists than when light blue italian love was launched because it's quite honestly a reincarnation of light blue forever with some minor differences again this is a great fragrance only because light blue forever is a great fragrance so it's not that i'm hating on it it's not that i don't like it you can see that i've worn it and i'm happy that i own it but when you buy this fragrance expecting something new and you get pretty much the same as the previous flanker that's a bit disappointing and it feels like kind of a cop out at the very least a creative letdown now i will say that in the dry down it varies the most from light blue forever than it does in that open because they're both very much grapefruit centric in in the open but again was expecting something a bit more although it is you know again it's a good fragrance even i would say even it's a great fragrance but i don't know if you like me when i first popped the lid off and sprayed it on i was like did they make a mistake this is light blue forever uh, hopefully in the future they'll be a bit more creative with the new flankers when you feel like your cologne prevents you from being a better man zadig and voltaire vibes of imprisonment that's what i think they should rename vibes of freedom because it doesn't feel like freedom it feels like they are imprisoned by a block could be either a cell block or writer's block but it's very definitely a creative block because vibes of freedom is just a light 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 version zadig and voltaire came in strong and hot with this is him they continued that winning streak with this is love which is the fresh version of this is him and this is supposed to be the fresher version of this is him it just ends up being very kind of watered down now it's pleasant enough to smell but doesn't last at all and it's not different enough to be creatively inspired and that's why it's kind of more of an imprisonment of that dna than it is a freedom type version ferragamo really fell out with this next release and it's a shame because they were on a winning streak it's like hitting 19 consecutive shots getting nothing but net but on that 20th it's like a shot out of a cannon it goes straight over the goal and disappears into the horizon never to be seen again and even the name bright leather what does it even mean leather isn't bright Leather can be light, uh, it can be staunch, it can be medicinal, it can be strong, it can be rough. I'm really enjoying my bergamot leather belt 
said no one ever. With the original Ferragamo and then intense leather and then spicy leather, again, they were hitting it out of the park with all of those along comes bright leather and it's just meh. It's supposed to be a spicy, brighter version of the Ferragamo intense leather or leather. It ends up being just a lightly spicy, you know, because it has like the blonde leather, rosemary, basil, some spices to back up that lighter leather. So it'd be more appropriately named Ferragamo light leather because it's not necessarily bright. And it's again, not really creative enough to be inspiring as a, a fragrance and only the completionists are going to purchase this just to round out the collection not because it's a great standalone fragrance the atomic number of platinum is 78 because this feels like the 78th flanker of invictus invictus platinum i know what let's make it exciting by throwing some harley davidson wings on the bottle and then biker gangs will want to lap this stuff up admittedly i like this fragrance i'm going to say it again because it sounds like i'm making fun of it but what i'm actually making fun of is the lack of creativity because the only reason I like this fragrance is the same reason that I like Coach Blue because I like absinthe oriented fragrances. You know, this has absinthe, cypress, patchouli. Primarily, you're getting that Invictus DNA with absinthe shot through it, which I really like. But on the heels of Victory, which was a fantastic Invictus fragrance, this feels a bit derivative. So was expecting something just a bit more. There's nothing inherently wrong with Invictus Platinum. It just feels like another derivative, uninspired Invictus release. While there's nothing necessarily funny about this next Mont Blanc release, I feel like it's gone from legendary to forgettable. Honestly, it's a gamble when you go into the red genre of fragrance anyway, because any red fragrance is simply the pillar fragrance with a lot of chili peppers added to it to make it warm. And that's what Mont Blanc Legend Red is. A red flanker of any pillar fragrance is like the chili version of the OG. It does have a good bit of blood orange in the open and mahogany wood in the base. So it is growing on me as time goes on. I'm actually enjoying wearing this. But again, red is kind of a gamble for any fragrance. And it's it's hit or miss, but mostly misses Yop Red King mediocre fragrance. Uh, a good example of, of red done right is uh, Spice Bomb Infrared. That is a fantastic release, but it differs enough from the original and it's close enough to the original to kind of keep that thread of success going. This just doesn't have enough oomph in it and therefore it feels like yet just another uninspired release of 2022. Finally, finally, a fragrance release for everyone that no one is going to wear. CK Everyone, the Eau de Parfum version. While I didn't think there was really anything wrong with the EDT version of this, it's just an okay, you know, version. You can, you can get through wearing it. The EDP version of this unisex fragrance by Calvin Klein is not good. This supposedly longer lasting version has just dived deeper into mediocrity. Mexican orange, Ceylon tea, Haitian vetiver, never smelled more uninspired or weak. And you know, it's an better concentration than the previous, but the previous version actually smells better than this does. So we go from a crowd of people saying, yay, CK everyone, to pretty much crickets. Further proving that 2022 was the year of the creative block, this next flanker from Emporio Armani, which was supposed to be stronger with you only, ends up being stronger with you only in an emergency. Because you know, fight or flight, that adrenaline rush, because it doesn't quite live up to the name. Again, similar to all of these, it is growing on me. It is a good quality fragrance, but you can't tell me it's the fresh version of the Stronger With You DNA when that position has already been filled by Stronger With You Freeze. Grapefruit, lavender, bourbon, vanilla, glazed chestnut, Cistus Absolute, very much the same that is in all of the, it's just got more like a pink pepperish stronger kind of pepper almost like they cut the dna in half it's not as nearly as sweet again similar to stronger with you freeze but it doesn't quite have the personality at least that two-sided hot and cold that stronger with you freeze has in spades our next disappointing new release of 2022 proves that gucci is actually guilty guilty sometimes of creating uninspired flankers such as gucci guilty parfum pour homme it's just not that different enough to merit the retail price of its nearly $140 
retail cost when it was released. And while I won't say this fragrance is necessarily banal, it's definitely pleasant enough. Lavender, lemon, juniper, orange blossom, nutmeg. It's very similar to the previous flanker and again will appeal only to the completionist out there that wants to kind of round out their collection by having them all. Finally, and for me, the most disappointing new release of 2022 because I really enjoy this line and I was hoping that the Evolution Endpoint would be this awesome, spicy, incredible climax when in fact it turned out to be kind of a creative queef. Did I say that out loud? Is a Hugo Boss release Boss Bottled Parfum. It has all of the ingredients to be an amazing fragrance and yet it misses the mark. Kind of like our 20th shot from Half Court that goes completely into the horizon and, and disappears. That's how much it misses the mark. It opens with what should be an incredible Mandarin Orange and Frankincense combination. Isn't that great? Representations of light and dark automatically in the open. Iris concrete or butter, fig tree root in the heart. You've got dark leathery notes and cedar wood in the base, right? Ticks off pretty much all the boxes of what you would need in a dynamic, darker parfum fragrance or flanker. And yet when you smell it, it smells good enough. It's like very kind of an intriguing smell. You can tell it's got some darkness in it, some light resins there, but there are these lightly intelligent fireworks that go off here and there in the open and then it just poof, <laughs> dissipates, it disappears into nothingness. Pretty disappointing because the line itself had such tremendous potential. I like the fragrance enough, again the aroma is very pleasant, I just there's not enough of it, I want more out of a parfum. I mean, this should be as equally heavy, as equally resounding and voluminous as Scandal Le Parfum. You know, that'll clear a room. That's how powerful it is when you spray two or three sprays with that on. Two or three or four or five sprays of this and you can finally smell that you're wearing something but hours later, can you? Not really. So, and unfortunately it is a bit on the weaker side and thus uh, kind of disappointed by that. And again, will only be purchased or collected by the completionist out there. Well, that's my 10 new releases from 2022 that disappointed me the most. Now there is a difference between the worst release and a disappointing release. Worst means that the fragrance itself is bad, that the aroma, not just the performance, but the smell itself. None of these are necessarily like that. They all smell good. And to some degree, I'll say, I'll throw out there that they're worth owning. Again, even if you're not a completionist, but you want something that, that smells good and to wear in the moment that has a kind of a modern complexity, all of these do have that to a degree but they could have been so much more. There's not a lot of creativity or inspiration in any of them where there has been in flankers previous to these. That's all I'm saying. So they're not worst releases of 2022, just the most disappointing personally to me. But what about to you? Do you have any fragrances that you were looking forward to that when you got them, you were like, what? If there are, let us know what those are in the comments below. Guys, thanks so much for stopping by to check out today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with StudioSense and I'll see you tomorrow.